All right, the topic for today is um, how to keep your body, mind, and spirit up and moving. What do you think of those three things is it's most important to keep up and moving? You got three things going on with you, your body, mind, and your spirit. What's the first thing you got to work on all the time? What needs to be high before anything else will go up high with it? Yeah, your spirit. You got to have that positive spirit. You have to have the motivation, the enthusiastic spirit. How many of you have it? Two out of 40. I'm excited. At times, that's right, at times. All right? You got to work very, very, very hard. Very, very, very hard to stay up. Because life at large, you know, is difficult. It's tough. There are things going on. There are things going on in our lives that have nothing to do with Parkinson's disease that can impact our state of mind and how we're thinking. Now, the key is if you're not positive, if you're not enthusiastic, if you're not joyful, then what's the opposite of being up? You're going to be down. And it's a lot easier to be down than it is to stay up. Am I right? It's very easy. You're on a slippery slope with Parkinson's disease. You're on a slippery slope. So it's real important, you know, that you really stay, uh, stay ahead of the game. And get yourself up high and maintain yourself. This is all about maintenance, right? Maintain yourself in a positive state of mind. It's all in how you look at it. It's all in how you accept it. And this is one thing that you have to work on every time when you wake up in the morning. Elena said, you know, she wakes up and meditates. When you wake up in the morning, I tell you this every single week, you set the positive note in your head. You set it. Like you set the alarm clock. I choose to be positive today. I choose to be motivated today. I, I choose to get the most out of this day. All right, and you set the tone, you set the disposition. I choose to be happy. How many of you think you're capable of doing that? Well, you are. <laughs> you are. And you start that from the minute your feet hit the carpet. All right? And you try to maintain that tone. Now, it's tough because what are your feelings when you wake up every single day? Another day with my friend Parkinson's disease that I can't get rid of, that will not let me alone, all right? How do you set that tone when you face today knowing well, well right, well? Did I say that right? Okay. Knowing full well that today is going to be very, very much like yesterday, and yesterday was a little bit challenging. So how do you do it? How do you get yourself up? Where does that motivation come from? Where does that enthusiasm come from? A good breakfast. Oh, a good breakfast. We're back to food. I can't get away from food. A good breakfast. That's a great thing. So do, what do you look forward to? Does that triggers you? You're looking for what, what you're going to eat great for breakfast, which what you really love? Oh, my. Well, come on over to Parkinson Place because they're all thinking food, healthy foods, right? Okay, so that's okay. That, there's nothing wrong with that. He's looking forward to his breakfast. Um, should I ask what you eat or what? Anything that's available. Okay. <laughs> what do you have? Uh, waffles and he. <laughs> okay, we're coming. Eggs, bacon, waffles. What else we got going on? Grits. Grits? You do that every morning? Not all of it. He takes his pick. Oh, he takes his pick. Just like on the farm. I said, you know when you see the, mo the shows on television about people that live on farms and they get up because they have to labor all day. I don't know. I've never been a farmer. But, you know, they have to eat. And they eat everything from soup to nuts for breakfast. It's like a feast. You know, with the chickens before the sun comes up. But, you know, that's what they need to... Yeah, but they've already been at it a couple hours, then they come in. Oh, I didn't know that. that. <laughs> so, okay, but it's something to look forward to. It's something that he enjoys. It's his pleasure zone. So that's a good, that's a good 
thought right there. Find your pleasure. Find what you know this day is going to bring into it that gives you joy and pleasure. What else, Pete? Well, I find the days that I'm real bad, I get up and I don't have anything on the schedule and I don't have anything to look forward to. I don't have anything to drag you out of the house or do something. Uh, this weekend, I went out and went to a place where a couple of bands were playing and I found a new radio station, 96.5. Yeah. And they have, they suggest stuff all day long, events and stuff coming up, so I've got something new to listen to and tune into and give me a lot more, open my horizons on it. Yeah. So what does that mean? Stay connected. So, you know, Parkinson Place doesn't have much for you Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right. So stay connected. There is something in this beautiful city that you can do nonstop. Am I right? There is something going on nonstop. You know, and things that are free. There's a lot of free activities, free places to go to really enjoy nature and to really enjoy the su the, the 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 water. I always, when I go to the beach, it always since the time I was a child, I was always infatuated by the fact that I was standing at the end of the what I thought was the end of the world because it was where the land and the water started. So I was always infatuated with that little line between water and sand since I was this big. But pay attention. Get the paper. Go online. Activities. So get up and get dressed and find something. This is your, pa this is your willpower. This is your sense of control. Anybody can say to me, oh my, there's nothing on the calendar today, so I didn't get out of my night clothes and I'm belly up on the recliner and I'm walking around eating Cheetos. Okay, no excuse, because if you become passive, you will become apathetic. You will become lazy. You will lose your charge. And if you, this is why I, this is a lecture I've been doing for almost 40 years. Your body, mind, and spirit has got to move at any age, all right? And even if you're not able to, you know, run around the block or ride the bicycle, you know, from here to Venice on that trail that people I know do, do you know I was coming to work today? Does it make sense to you? I was coming to work this morning, and I admire people that have nothing to do but bike ride. <laughs> Particularly when I'm on my way to work. <laughs> but I did understand, because I come down Weber Street right here, and they have all this space here between this and the pavement. You know what, Dusty? You know where I'm going? And then this sweet young man, Maybe he doesn't go to work till noon. I don't know. But then there's a bike pass that's wide as that table, right next to where my car has to be. I don't get it. And like that isn't enough. I have to wait for him because I know he's going to go around those dumb circles that you all know I despise. You know? It's high risk. I don't understand it. I don't know where I'm going with this. So maybe you can't ride a bike, all right? But you can get up and you can do something. All right? Keep going. Keep moving. Pete? Well, I typed in things to do in Sarasota. Yeah. And things popped up. Number two was to visit this free-range cat farm in Sarasota. The what? A free-range cat farm. They get oh. cats, they drop them off there, and they, have, they go all over the acreage. It's free, uh, and, uh, and apparently it's fun to do. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, how many cats do they have? <laughs> There's cats everywhere. You know, you can get into volunteerism. You know, if you got nothing to do, give your life meaning. Go do something. You know, find find something. I have people all the time say, "Mary, what can I do to help you?" So, that's a real good thing. All right. So when you wake up in the morning and you can be discouraged, you can um, be not sad but poorly motivated when you say, oh, another day just like yesterday. And, you know, you have to live the life that you choose to live. So, like we said, get up, get dressed, get engaged, all right? Get out. Get up, get dressed, get out. And you'll be surprised what's out there to find, uh, for, to find something to do. So, you know, and I'm not saying go out every day. All right, get out of the house every day, even if you sit in the sun. One of the greatest things for stress management is 10 minutes in the sunshine. 
10 minutes just in the sunshine and the fresh air will help you. So, you know, even if you sit on your patio, even if you sit in a sunny window, even if you're sitting in the car waiting for whatever, put the wind down because it really is good for you to keep your spirits up. Okay? So you got to work at it. You also have to consider every day. Do like a self-avail of yourself every single day. How am I feeling? Um, how's my spirit doing? And am I up or am I down? Now, I want you to understand you're not machines. You're not robots. You have real stuff going on. You have real challenges with Parkinson's disease. All right? And it's hard. Life with this disease is very, very, very hard. So I'm not saying don't give yourself a day off if you're just tired or out of sorts or whatever. Don't push too hard because a big piece of living well with this, a big piece of being strong enough to keep your spirit up is the ability to pace. And everything is about peace, peace and balance in your life. All right? How many of you have um, peace of mind? A little piece, <laughs> real little piece. You know, peace of mind is pretty much everything. What does peace of mind mean to you? The three very interesting words: peace of mind. One with yourself. What is one with yourself? What is peace of mind? Does it urgent no urgent worries? Does it mean that you have no stress, no strain, no concern in your life? But peace of mind is what that you're equipped mentally and spiritually to accept and to face what's at you or what's already there and allow yourself to continue to go like this, all right? It's not going to make you go nuts and it's not going to whack you down. Peace of mind. I pray for peace of mind every morning of my life, all right? <laughs> Doesn't mean that I'm not going to have the same old stuff going on every single day. But it's, it means that I have the ability to deal with it effectively and stay in a sense of peace and balance and calmness in my life. Because without that, you're not going to deal with the disease real well. You know, if you're just stressed, depressed, and out of control, how many of you are stressed, depressed, and out of control? You're barely awake with me. Right now, uh, you are all nodding. Nuh-uh. -uh. Nuh Drinking water. Okay. It's very easy with the amount of challenges that you face every day to become stressed, depressed, and out of control. What do you face? The one thing I try to do with you with Parkinson Power every single week is to really internalize and really take a look at what you, where you are, what you've got, what's going on. All right. So how are you doing? How many of you really think, feel you've got the handle on this? Yeah, I think you all do. Because you're trying. You're all trying. You're all staying engaged. You're all doing the rules of wellness. You're all coming here, right? You're all trying. You're not uh, in bed in a bowl or belly up in the recliner. You're trying. But it's not easy. All right? So what are you doing to stay up? What are you doing to stay positive? We're eating breakfast. We're staying engaged. What else? We have before breakfast. Huh? A new uh, way of looking at life. I was getting undetermined with everything. And uh, things were looking dark. And I asked myself, what did I really like that made me feel good before I got upset? And it was running or walking. We would do like five kilometers in the morning and anywhere that I and I said I can't do that now. But I can do with um, half a mile. Half a mile at the marina. Oh. And the, the walkway is smooth. There's no things to trick you into getting a hang on the head. Okay. And it makes a big difference. Okay, so what did you just hear Naomi say? You know, she wanted to think about what made her happy. What made her happy was running and walking. Five kilometers, is that? Okay. Yeah, but. Maybe I'll be able to do more, I don't know. Right. 
But instead of saying, oh, well, it's me. I'm, I can't run. I can't walk. I can't do this anymore. And sitting in the beach chair and not getting up, she found a place that's easy for her to walk. And she continues to walk and she continues to try. And you have a good time. All right? So that tenacity, that I can't do this, but I can do this. All right? So what I'm hearing from Naomi is she has, as well as possible, graciously accepted that what she used to do she can't do anymore but she has replaced it with something that she can do you got me and this is the thing with this disease the constant 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 loss the one great thing that you're dealing with with Parkinson is loss right and the human spirit we hate to lose we want it, we like it the way it is, we want it fun, easy, fast, and the more it takes away, the harder it is on your body, mind, and spirit, okay? But what she's doing now is, she's still doing, to the best of her ability, the highest functional level that she can do, and what you're doing, sweetheart, is you're keeping yourself strong, so you're going to keep yourself up here as well, right? And she's doing every exercise class, every everything Nomi's doing in here to keep us up. So I commend you. I'm very proud of you. Really, truthfully. Okay. So don't let don't let the past steal today. What do I mean by that? Right? Don't let the past steal today. You're not, none of us are what we used to be. All right? So it's, okay, I can't do it anyway, but I'm going to modify what I can do. I'm going to find a way to do it. All right. What else? So I just realized that I'm not going to let the present stay today. Because right now I'm going through breast cancer. And I've had surgery and I'll be starting radiation soon. But out of this, I have found more friends and more people supporting me. More people talking to me. Yeah. One thing, um, and it's a beautiful statement, you know, you realize, you know, if you stop with all the, um, hel I hate the word helter-skelter because that horrible movie, but all the minutiae of the day and all the things that you think are so darn important and that your priorities are so off. The average, if we really take a look at how we spend eight hours or 12 hours or 14 hours or however long you're awake, most of this stuff, if we really wrote it down step by step by step, how much of it really truthfully matters? What happens with, with a, 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 a cancer diagnosis, and I, I commend you for sharing your personal life, uh, you know, the first thing that happens is, you know, your, your priorities come right up and smack you in the face. All right, and I know that for a fact because I taught on I was uh, oncology for 30 years. I am a cancer survivor. Okay, but the first thing that happens is everything that really matters is in living color right there, right? And all the stuff that we thought was so darn important doesn't really matter at all. So the ability to let the past go, but the ability is don't let the day rob you of what's really precious to you. All right? And I think it's very important for people of any age to really, really pay attention. What are your priorities? What do I want from this day? What really matters to me? Can you answer that? Because a lot of times you really think it. Now, was, oh, I had a little chit chat with Naomi this morning, and she reminded me the only thing that makes anything real is writing it down. Do you know that? It's just a flight of ideas. It's a thought. It's a vision. It's a hope or a dream until you wrote it, write it down. Or do it. Well, no. You remember what you told me this morning? She shared with me about when she was 11, she wrote herself a note that she was going to live in Israel and she was going to have five kids. So guess what? And a ch Oh, the chickens. I forgot the chickens. The chicken farm. And she was 11. And I was going to wait until I was a senior year of high school, and then I was going to open it up. And, and what did she do? What did you do now? She moved his life all upside down. Mm hmm. We have five kids. We had a chicken farm. We lived in Israel. 
<laughs> if you want it, you'll get it. Right. But it has to be real. You write it down. You really take a look. And do this exercise today with your me, myself, and I time. You know, because when things get difficult, when things get shaky, when things get uncertain, okay, you can go to that and bring yourself right back on the emotional balance beam. This is what really matters. And if you still got it to hold on to, then you're all set. There's your stability. There's nothing to be afraid of as long as you have what really matters to you. What matters to you? What's your top priority? I'm in here all week. No, it's not. It's, you're supposed to say Barry. What's, what's in my... Oh, okay. She's always got an answer. She's sharp as a tack. Honest to gosh. So you got togetherness with a favorite person in your life, and you got your friends and your activities here. That's that's good. You're very easily pleased, Naomi. Some people have a lot higher standards. Am I right? What about the rest of you? What's your top priority? You need to have an answer for me when I ask this to you. What is it? We have to think about it. <laughs> How old are you now? You shouldn't have to think about what's your top priority. Come on. Yeah, but it changes. No, it never changes. Mine does. <laughs> yes, it does. Tell them. My top priority has not changed since the time I was 16 years old. And Jenny is the top of my list all that time. Aw, that's sweet. I've been married 55 years. This month? Woo! What day? Is it a Tuesday? Good grief. <laughs> Nothing by, like being sure, right? How many of you have been married 55 years? 56. 56. 50, 53. 53. 54. 63. The Lowskies have got it. Anybody can beat 63? I'm not even 64. <laughs> <laughs> We've had 104 wedding anniversary. Together, together, yeah. Add them all up. Did you hear what he said? He's not even 63. Go slap him, Mary. That one in the same color blue shirt is yours. That's wonderful. It's, a, it's, a, it's really a gift, you know, to uh, have life with someone that you really cherish. Isn't it? You have no idea how fortunate you are. You know, and if it's not a... A husband or a wife, it can be anybody in your life that makes you, you know, really feel whole and happy. That's what a beautiful gift, and that's priceless. Doesn't cost a dime. All right. The number one priority needs to be who said yourself? Thank you. And finally, somebody listens to me. <laughs> Yourself, yourself. And if this is not selfishness, not this is not made up, you know, because your your goal in life, you know, is to be a happy, healthy person, whether it be a man or a woman. Because you can't be an extraordinary wife or a husband or a friend or a teacher or a parent or a grandmother or a nurse or plumber or whatever you are unless you're a happy, whole, peaceful human being. All right? So you need to work with that. You are the top priority in your life. Because if you're not happy and whole, you can't make a wonderful po and positive. You can't make a positive contribution into everybody in your life. Think about all the people that know and love you, right? 55 years, 63 years, 110 years together. <laughs> I don't know. Okay? But you want to do your best for yourself so that you can do your best for the per people in your life that love you and depend on you. All right? So you have to build your strength, build your confidence, build your pos 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 positivity. All right? So you have enough for yourself and enough to share. Doesn't that make sense? My caregivers, I always say, Think about the one that loves you the most, that's depending on you the most. Now, you take a look at their life without you in it. That's the scariest thought, isn't it? Yep. The scariest thought. 
All right? So don't, and, and each of you together in a loving relationship, you take care of yourself, but you encourage your loved one to take care of themselves as well. It's a partnership, right? What are you going to get her for her anniversary? Yeah, yeah, you, not me, you. I had to think about that. You can, oh, uh, I know, but you know, little sticky notes on the refrigerator. I saw something I love at. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. So how many of you do make yourself pr the top priority? And, w and how do you make yourself the top priority? How do you do it? The whole wellness package. The whole wellness package. You've got to do for yourself. You have to eat right now. I'm not talking over here table number two <laughs> with the waffles and the grits and the eggs and the bacon and the blah, blah, blah. Right? Nothing better than eggs cooked in bacon fat. Is there? It's the way I was raised. I know. I have to fight. Little things like this I fight. But that's the way I was raised. I had a nana. And she, everything was deep fried. And the bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. The mayo was thicker than the sliced beef steak tomato. You know where I'm going? I lived, oh, and when I was, a, I'm going to bring the picture for Dust to put on the screen. I found them. Marilyn at 5, Marilyn at 10. You won't know it's me, all right? But that's the way that I was raised. And she was never sick a day in her life and went to sleep at 94, 95. And that's the way she ate the whole time. So I don't know where we're going with all the problems that we had today. The pesticides and the additives and the preservatives and all that other stuff, right? Okay. But anyway, you have to eat right. You have to eat healthy, all right? Control the hand that feeds you. We have Bonnie London coming in here every Thursday. Oh, here's another thing I want to announce. We're going to do a field trip, a day trip to Costco's. <laughs> Don't take the fruit that has pits in it at Costco's now. Yeah, I heard something on the news this morning about a recall. And also Whole Foods. Was it Whole Foods or Traders? Traders. Was it Traders? I heard that. Yeah, there's a recall on the peaches. What was it? Nectarines and peaches. The pit, the pit ones. Chair. Okay, and okay, so what was the date though? I, I missed the date. It was it purchased after a certain, it was in a certain last month. Well, I hope you don't have the peaches in the next Doreen's from last month. <laughs> yeah, but you don't keep it a month, do you? I would hope not, all right? I was always taught that with fresh vegetables, that after three days they lost their nutrients. I have to ask that of Bonnie. <laughs> You know, like if you have the the asparagus or the broccoli and it's in there a week, even though it looks good, it's, it's worth nothing. that's what I thought too as well. All right. Okay. It's like a car that de devalues. <laughs> when you take it out around the lot, right? Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. Pre-packaged, -pre pre-prepared, as long as the labels are good. But we're going to go to Costco's, not this Thursday, the following. And we're going to meet Bonnie up there. You know where it is, Palmer Ranch, the new one? She said there's a lot of very, very fine foods that are very healthy for us um, that are pre-packaged or pre-prepared, or I don't know what word she is. She's going to be teaching to read labels, how to have on hand in your home the go-to foods and the foods that even if you're busy or tired or whatever, you can guarantee healthy choices, um, you know, at arm's length, okay? So you can sign up for that. That's going to be fun. I'm actually going, you know. Somebody go with me, please. Will you, everybody go. I think they sound like fun. We'll schlep around Costco's, right? And, uh, and learn something new. Bonnie's a very good teacher, and she's very liberal with her thinking, and she'll help you to find foods that are really right for you. Okay? Uh, yeah. I was looking on the internet looking at fish uh -huh. and the, the benefits of fish, and they had a chart of fish from the worst for you to the best for you. And swordfish was right up at the top of the worst because of the mercury. Yeah. yeah. Tuna fish was right up at the top. 
and salmon was right up. I had heard that. What are we supposed to eat? We got a wild salmon. I, that's one thing I learned. Wild, only wild. All right? All right, but think about that because that'll be fun. And we'll go from like 11 to 12 and maybe. I don't know about that. Taste the samples. Oh, and then they're offering a, a, a special rate for membership. If how many of you belong to Costco? Because I have a card, but I've never. You have to buy so much of everything, right? Yeah. yeah. Large quantities, so you have to shop once every six months, huh? It's a little, we, we joined once and it was a little far. Yeah. We joined. Uh, and then we let that membership run out because it's just too far for us to. Too far to drive, yeah. It's not, it's not in your loop. <laughs> I, I don't know, Pete. I don't know. Okay, so I want you to focus on. Your, your wellness package, do the best that you can do for yourself because you can't keep your body, mind, and spirit up if you don't feel well. Do you know that? If you don't feel well, if you don't feel healthy, if you don't feel that you have energy, if you feel tired. We all have days that are, we feel tired, you know, if you didn't sleep well the night before. But I think generally you have to have a certain energy level to really enjoy life. And the energy level with Parkinson is, is decreased, right? Because you're using so much energy and so much um, uh, carbohydrates, um, you know, to function. You're using twice as much as I am, all right? So anyway, the other thing, too, is try to eat four to six smaller meals a day. Are you doing that, any of you, as opposed to three? Ma'am, oh, so you're doing this, what I'm hearing, about six times a day? Huh? I guess you do. Do you have one of those cushion things in front of your stove, those cushion mats? No. Are you going to need to get one? Every day. Oh, okay. So you have six small, small meals. Okay. Like after breakfast, I have a bagel with cream cheese and jelly. Uh huh. See, that to me would be a meal, and that to you. And then we do lunch. All right. Oh, yeah. oh, no, he gets his I'll give him <laughs> Wow. You need a Costco card from the bulk yeah. that you're putting down, I guess, all right? There you go. There you go. But try to make healthy choices, all right, and everything in moderation. The, the six meals a day will help you because those of you that are in Cinemet sometimes can create a little bit of nausea, a little bit of an upset tummy. So if you keep a little something down there, It'll keep your energy level up there, and it'll also help you, you know, with the um, something in your stomach to help you with um, the meds. Some of you take a lot of medications, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, all right. So try to do that. Lots and lots of water. Are you doing your water? Yes. Okay. How much water a day now? Seven. Seven. What did uh, six or seven? What, who, who was at Bonnie's last lecture? She said, Mary, what did she say? How many ounces per pound of body weight? She, she, what did she say, George? I don't know. I just take water until whatever was aggravating me stops. Ah. All right, that's your solution. Yeah, one ounce, it is. One ounce of water. No, uh, every three pounds. Is it for three? Oh, okay. One ounce of water for every two pounds of your body weight. That's a lot of water, isn't it? Good grief. But be very careful with your fluid consumption, you know, like after dinner. You know, I would encourage you to really be careful. Try to get all of your water and, you know, sip your bottle all the time. Have your sippy bottle with, take it with you in the car. Put it where you frequent the most within your home so you can see it, whether it's the kitchen counter or the diner, wherever you are the most. And ever just keep sucking. Don't sit down and drink 16 ounces at one shot. But just keep si sip sipping and try to get as much in as you can before dinner, before dinner. Watch your fluid intake, you know, when you're eating, because, you know, if you put the water in there, the stomach is not that big. 
You think it is, but it's not, all right? So if you fill yourself up with water, you're not going to have room for the good food. So do your healthy choices. What are they? This is your choice. Do I eat the white bread or the whole grain? Whole grain. Remember, you're going to eat the sandwich. You might as well eat it on whole grain. All right? Whole grain bagels, whole grain waffles, right? Dry cereal, all right? Anything you can buy. Pasta, spa pastas, uh, rices, because the grain is really important. It's really important to you, the fiber, uh, with regards to your Parkinson's disease, because we all know that sometimes the, um, the G GI tract can slow down on you with Parkinson's disease from the immobility. You're not moving as much. You might not be drinking as much water, okay? And the little peristalsis that moves the food through after you've digested has slowed down along with everything else. So the high fiber is going to be really, really good for you. You can sprinkle some stuff on um, your salads and seeds and nuts and all that kind of stuff, okay? So do that. But if you do high fiber, you have to drink your lots of water, but you're going to do it anyway. Don't consume the water any time after dinner other than to take your medication a little bit because then you have to get up more than one or two times in the night time to, to go to the bathroom and that's when your falls are happening okay so eat healthy lower the fats um, lower the cholesterol chicken and fish right lots of fruits and vegetables Lots of, lots of fruits and vegetables. And what am I forgotten? Rest. Okay. Sleep is critical for you. You have got to sleep. You have got to sleep, both the Parkinson patient and the caregiver. You're getting worn out from this disease, all the effort that it takes, right? Even the trauma is with that, you know, the, the resting trauma, even you're, you're burning um, you know, energy and carbs, even with that, the, the energy that you need to mobilize and to dress and to do some of the simple things, it's going to make you tired. The meds are going to conk you out as well, okay? Some of the meds, it's why I don't take insult when you just nod off, because I know I'm not boring up here. I try hard not to be boring, but some of you, I can see, you can't hold your eyes open. You're tired. You've eaten. You've taken your medicine. Take your cat nap. It's fine. You always wake up. Just be sure you wake up again when you're sitting in front of me, okay? Okay. So try to get on the, a really good sleep pattern. You all know this. Get your body on a cycle. Get your body on a cycle. It'll automatically love you for it. You all have pretty much a routine. Find one that works for you. Break it when there's something fun to do or when you travel or, you know, when you do something out of the ordinary. But try to stay in the routine because it will help you. Exercise, it's a must. And physicians, all physicians now are realizing the importance of exercise. This is a real trend that we're seeing now, huh? At least three times a, day, a week, walk early morning or um, uh, maybe sunset or something. Don't walk between 10 and 2. Be very, very careful. Use the treadmill. Be very careful of your balance if you're out, you know, walking. I told you about the dog walker in my neighborhood, didn't I? Did I tell you about this girl? She's so adorable. She's got three dogs over here, and she's, she reminds me of New York City, and three dogs over here. She's got the big ones over here, and she's got the little ones over here, you know, and she's trotting along like this down the street with dogs, you know, bouncing her stop. And every day she does a couple loops around the neighborhoods. If they all take off at the same time, I mean, she's just... But find yourself a safe exercise. Stationary bicycle is great. You've got to watch your balance. You've got to watch the heat. Don't be walking out there by yourself. Don't be walking out there in the high humidity, okay? Don't be walking out there alone if you can fall. And always remember, if you walk there, you have to walk back again. All right? Pete knows that. 
The other thing too is pool pool therapy. If you have access to a pool, do you? And we have pools everywhere in Florida. All right, and get in the pool and just bring your leg up and down and do water aerobics or whatever. You can come here four days a week for we have five different exercise classes. So if you don't know what to do, just come here and exercise here with us. No. All right. All right. What else goes along with wellness? Eating, sleeping, stress management. We're managing stress well, aren't we? Are you stressed at all? Is there any stress related to this disease? <laughs> what triggers stress in your life? Trash, stress is what? Difficulty, pressure, strain. What's difficult in your life? You can start throwing it out. What's difficult in your life? What makes your life difficult? Patients and caregivers with Parkinson's. Movement, mobility. What else? Not being able to plan the life. Not being able to plan the life. All right. It's a difficulty. Travel. Yeah, travel can be very. Tra tra travel is difficult at best. I'm going to travel in September. I am not looking forward to it. I do not do well. You know, I, I just. It used to be so much fun to travel, remember? You did pretty good on a cruise. Yeah, I know. I did real well, but that's different. I'm talking airlines. So really make yourself the priority. Really wake up on a positive note. Really pay atten attention to I'm eating right, I'm sleeping right, I'm managing stress, I'm moving, I'm exercising. We try to give you anything and everything, you know, to keep your body, mind, and spirit up and moving. But the key is, you know, that, that you own your life, that only you, you're accountable for your life, and I'm accountable for mine, right? And people in your life, your caregivers, your people that love you, can motivate you as much as we possibly can from the outside. You can do it. We love you. We're proud of you. Keep going. Rah, 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 sis, boom, bah. Okay, but the empowerment comes from inside of you. The empowerment is knowing what is right to do for me. And the empowerment is the action. You understand? I can motivate, motivate, and motivate, but until I can get you to move, you're not empowered. So what we try to do here is with, with Parkinson power, you know, I can't change your disease. I can't make it go away. I don't have a magic pill to cure it. Uh, we treat the symptoms. We offer you anything we can to help you, all right? But the ability to live well with Parkinson's is completely up to you. The problem is this. This is what's going on. This is what you have. And this is what we're going to do about it. Now, it's up to you to do it or to not do it. You see? And the more you do for yourself, the more you try, the more empowered you are, the more under control you will feel. You, only you control your life, your body, your mind, and your spirit. You got it. And everything that you need to do this and to do this well is inside of you. You are totally equipped. Any challenge in life, you've got it. It's in there. You got to pull it up from your toes and believe in yourself. I mean, I know... Jenny Face is a, a difficult time. Please keep her in your thoughts and, and your prayers. You know, we're going to get her through this and get her better. Right, honey bunny? Absolutely. And you're going to learn, trust me, because I learned it. You're going to learn exactly who loves you, who is committed to you. You're going to learn that there are wonderful people on standby to help you and be there. Okay? And you're going to learn exactly who you are. That's, and you're going to learn, more than anything else, your priorities. So if you don't have your top three priorities, I want to give you that exercise when you leave me now. You think about it. You know, think about it on the ride home. Think about it when you're having your quiet time, your meditation time. What really matters to me? And what do I have to do every single day um, to make my, my life the way I choose it to be? That was a cute little smile. So did this help you?